Okay, so what we're going to do right now is we are going to do first time visitors. So, if this is your very first time here at Kid Nation, you've never been here before, welcome. Do me a favor, put your hand up. Keep, put your hand up, keep your eyes open, because something really fun is going to be heading your way right now. Heads up, pay attention, watch your throws. Heads up, heads up. All right. All right, if this is your first time, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to raise your Frisbee way up. Raise it up for me. Raise it way, way up. Raise your Frisbee up. Now, we asked a lot of Frisbees. Miss Erin loves to see that, all right? I need you to give a huge Kid Nation welcome. So let's welcome them. You need one over there? Work over there. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. We can do better than that. Come on. All right, welcome to Kid Nation. Do me a favor, put your Frisbees underneath your seat. If this is not your first time in Kid Nation, you need to make sure that you turn in your Frisbees to one of your friendly Kid Nation staff because if you get caught with a Frisbee and it is not your first time, you get all, and I mean all, of your tickets joint. And that is extremely tragic because it's so not necessary. Because if you want a new one, you can buy it for just five prize bucks in Price City and go figure. Price City's open today. Oh. What a lovely day out, isn't it? Oh, it's very, very nice today. What, what are you thinking? What are you doing? Nothing. What are you doing? What are you, what are you doing? You doing? What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Really, I was just coming out here to tell her that we have a special guest today. I asked a few people to see if they could find someone that was an important part in the Easter story to join us today. We were going to have a little interview with them. And they said they did. I'm super excited. Now, we're not talking Easter story as in like a mutant rabbit that, that poos out uh, eggs and then breaks into houses and leaves his droppings all over. That's not what I'm talking about. Not talking about mutant animals. We're talking about the real Easter story. And I'm not even really sure who it is. They said they got someone. They were an important part of the Easter story. And when I'm saying story, I mean the real historical, what happened in history. So let's give a big round of applause for whoever it is because they're coming out right now. Man, this is exciting. I am... Uh, who are you? The rooster? Yes, thank you, Pastor. And may I say, after 2,000 years, it is about time. Well, uh, what do you, I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, come on. Easter comes around every year, and you have, what, 2,000 Easter's? Yeah, somewhere around there. 2,000 years, and every year, churches are looking for a new angle. Tell the story from Jesus' point of view. Tell it from Peter's. From Pilate's, from Judas's, even Barabbas gets his story told. Why is there no love for the rooster? Wait a second. I think I know who you are. Are you the rooster that crowed three times? I I'm not sure if all these kids out here know you're part of the story. I beg your pardon? Everybody knows my part of the story. Jesus didn't say, before the morning comes, before the cow moves. Or before the dog barks, he said, before the rooster crows, the rooster. All right, and that's you. Yes, that's right. Most of you have Easter pageants. I don't even get credit. I mean, if they do my part at all, it's off stage or worse. They use a sound effect. You put the donkey out on stage, right? Sheeps, goats, pigs, camels, Pastor, camels. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. This isn't even their holidays. I mean, camels are Christmas, but everybody loves them. So let's bring them back out. All right, okay, N now rooster. Now, we gotta continue there on. There were chickens in the stable too, you know. 
Yes, yes, there were chickens. Okay, so what rooster, what I'm trying to say is I think we would all love to hear the Easter story from your point of view. What really happened that day? Well, from my point of view? Yes. Well, I went to bed around 9, my alarm went off at 4.30, I had my coffee, read the paper, and then I crowed just before 5 a.m. That's, that's it? So it was just another morning for you? It was just another morning for all of us. I mean, it wasn't good, good, called Good Friday back then, you know. Uh, I suppose you can't call it Good Friday before anything really happens. So, uh, all right, so did you ever find out what really happened that morning? I did. This kid named Mark came and interviewed me. He, he wanted to know my whole life story. All he gives me is two sentences in his gospel. Oh, only two sentences. All right, well, did you read what, what Mark wrote in his gospel? What did you think of it? Well, I was glad to be me and not Peter. Oh, yeah, Peter does have a rough time at this point. I mean, that guy was totally broken. He turned his back on his best friend. I couldn't imagine how he felt after denying Jesus. I know. That would be horrible. But you know what's really crazy? Jesus knew Peter would deny him, and he still forgave him for doing so. I couldn't believe it. Uh, you know what? That's something that all of us can learn from, that even though, even though Peter denied Jesus three times that he still forgave Peter for doing what he did. And I think all of us have messed up a little bit sometime or then, now and then. And Jesus has forgiven us also. I think that says a pretty loud message to all of us, don't you think? Oh, yeah, but not as loud as Jesus forgiving Harlan Sanders. Harlan Sanders? Who in the world is Harlan Sanders? Harlan Sanders is the founder of KFC, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Oh, come on. I mean, what a thing to be known for. Slicing up, off to the bone, lightly breading us, frying us up, and serving us on a toasted bun with a all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Well, I, I thank you for sharing with us here a little bit. But what does... Harlan Sanders, the founder of KFC, have to do with grace, the grace of God and Easter. That's what we're talking about. Well, when I heard about Peter, I was impressed. It takes a lot of love to forgive a friend who betrays you, but if forgiving the guy who invented the chicken sandwich, that, my friend, is a miraculous kind of love. All right, all right. Well, we thank you for sharing your insights and, and your wisdom about what happened. Well, thank you, Pastor. It has been a great pleasure. I just hope it's not another 2,000 years before I can speak again. Yeah, that, maybe write a book or something. Psh, nobody reads a book anymore, Pastor. This is the 21st century. I'm writing a screenplay. A screen? Yo, know, to be on a movie? Well, well, good luck with that, Rooster. Well, thank you. And if anyone knows Johnny Depp, I would love him to play me in the movie. What? Uh, yeah. All right, everybody, let's hear it for the rooster. Bye-bye, everyone. All right. Well, that wasn't exactly what I had planned when I said I wanted to interview someone who was involved in the Easter story. So let's try something else. You know what? Because the rooster got me thinking, thinking about chickens and stuff, I got some eggs in back. Let's tell the Easter story using eggs. What do you think about that? Let's try it. Let's see what happens, huh? Wait, 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 wait. I got a movie clip about that. Roll it! The egg what? The egg decator can tell the difference between a good egg and a bad egg. If it's a good egg, it's shined up and shipped out all over the world. But if it's a bad egg, down the ship. It's an educated egg decator. It's a lot of nonsense. Wonka on Easter at church. This is crazy. What is happening here? All right. Let's get back to talking about eggs. All right, here. I got some eggs back here. All right. So here we go. I got a dozen eggs with a unlock bonus rewards for the Crude's movie game. Anybody want to see that movie, Crudes? All right. We're not talking about, I'm getting distracted again. We're not talking about Crudes. We're not talking about Willy Wonka. And we're not talking about KFC. We're talking about Easter today. And so we're going to, whoa. 
Which one is it? Not that one. Not that one. It's that one. <laughs> Have anybody ever misspelled a rotten egg before? This thing is bad. I'm going to take this behind stage. The whole stage breaks. I have to go open the window or something. Knock it off. Don't bring it back here. Oh, gee. All right. Uh, just put it down here. I'll find it sometime later. All right. Whew. Has anybody ever smelled a rotten egg? Wow. It smells like sulfur. Do you know what that smells like? Bad. It smells really bad. Holy moly. All right, well, you know what? That actually makes me think about someone in the Easter story. Just like there was 12 eggs in here. Now there's 11. 12 eggs, but one of them was bad. Jesus had 12 guys following him around, spending time with him all three years of his ministry. They were with him. They were hearing him teach. They were learning from him, and yet there was one that you could call a bad egg. Who thinks they know who I'm talking about? Let me see, I'm gonna find somebody. Who do you think? Let me see. Oh, good try. Not Peter, that's not the one I'm thinking about, but that was a very good guess. Let me see, Nolan, what do you, who do you think? Judas, that is exactly right. Go get a ticket for that, let's hear it for him. That was exactly right. Judas was kind of like a rotten egg. Think about it. Oh, yeah, there's our, our rotten egg. And let me pick, we'll put a picture of Judas up there. All right. Judas was kind of like a rotten egg. He was with Jesus the whole time of his ministry, three years. He was hearing him teach, and yet... If you, thought, if you look at how he acted, it seems like from what the Bible says, he was only concerned about himself, what he could get out of his, his time with Jesus, what he could get out of hanging out with Jesus. The Bible even says that he used to steal money from, the, they, had a, they all shared money, the 12 of them, and he was in charge of you know buying the meals and whatever, but he'd take money out of that and he'd just... Put it in his pocket. He was only interested in what was best for Judas. Actually, let's look at here. Luke chapter 22, verse 1 through 6. You don't have to look it up. If you're taking notes, write it down because it's pretty important. But I'm not going to make us read all this because that's, that's a lot of words. But what it's saying here is that the leading priests and the teachers at that time were mad about Jesus. They were mad at him, and they wanted to knock him off. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to get rid of him, take him out of the picture. We're going to talk more about that in just a little bit. And Judas decided, you know what? I could make money off of this deal. And so he betrays Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Actually, do you guys want to watch a little video clip of our, our rotten egg? Judas, because not only does he betray him for 30 pieces of silver, look what happens in the Garden of Gethsemane. While Jesus was praying, the disciples were supposed to be praying, but they all fell asleep, and here comes Judas. Let's see what happens. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour is near, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise. Let us go. Here comes my betrayer. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd 
armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus replied, Friend, do what you came for. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. All right, we'll pause it right there. Now, before we go on, I just want to make sure you guys all understand this. When it says Judas kissed him, it's not about t kissing him on the lips like something that shouldn't be done. No, it's not more like, how many of you have ever seen like uh, a European family or seen it on a TV show where they're like, oh, hello, hello, and they go, mm, mm, and kiss on both sides of the cheeks. That's more like what it was. But here Judas, he walks right up to Jesus and betrays him with a kiss. How could he do that? You know how? Because he was only concerned about what's in it for Judas. Judas. But you know what, that makes me think about ourselves sometimes. How many times in our life are we only concerned with what's in it for me? Even when it comes to God. Like someone's like, why do you go to church? Oh, it's awesome, we get tickets and we get chances to win prizes and Prize City's there. Why do you go to church? Oh, it's awesome because if you, if you know Jesus then you never have to be sick and that's why. Why do you go to church? Oh, it's, it's cool because... I get to make lots of friends there that won't get me in trouble. Are any of those things bad things? No. But if the only reason you have a relationship with God is to get, is to be like, gimme, 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 gimme. I want tickets. I want salvation. I want healing. I want provision. I want all, all my needs to be met so I can go to camp. I want this. I want that. If, if, if that's what your prayer life sounds like when you're talking to God and that's it, we need to make some changes because we're more like Judas than we know. Or what about this? I got another egg here. Let me see. I got this egg here. Hang on. I have. It is a a plastic egg. All right, well, at least plastic eggs have some good stuff in them. This. That's a ripoff. Get in a plastic egg with nothing in it. Um, it, it wasn't me. I, I don't be blaming me for whatever, eating whatever's inside of it. That should have been there. Yeah. Um, ooh, Skittles. What? Come on. All right. Let's talk about this plastic egg with nothing in it. How many, how many of you have ever been on an egg hunt and found an egg and you're like, yes! And you open up, you're like, what? Who ate my candy? What happened here? Somebody needs to go to jail for this. This is serious. Makes you mad. You know what? There was a character in the Easter story. When I say Easter story, I'm talking about the real Easter story. We're talking about what happened in history to Jesus and other people at that time. There's someone that was kind of like this empty Easter egg. That 
when you looked at them, they look real good on the outside. They're like, oh yeah, that, that, person's, that person's good. They know God. Look at that. That's just nice. And when you open it up, nothing. You want to know who that is? The plastic egg. I would say the person that was most like a plastic egg in the Easter story was a guy named Caiaphas. Everybody say Caiaphas. That's a, kind of a fun word to say, isn't it? Say Caiaphas. Not hit a fist, Caiaphas. All right. Caiaphas was the high priest at that time. He was the guy in the church that everybody else was supposed to look up to. He was like one of the main head honcho leaders. But how many of you have ever known someone that when they get a little bit of authority, they're kind of like a Gestapo? You know what I'm saying? Like maybe your mom says, okay. I'm going to the store, and your older brother, Paco, is in charge. I don't know. Maybe your older brother's named Paco. I don't know. And then your older brother's like, yep, I'm in charge, and so you have to do everything I say. Go clean my room or else. How many ever had, a, had that happen to them before? Maybe not clean the room, but... They're like, I'm in charge. Maybe your babysitter's like, I'm in charge, so now you're going to do my homework. Or I don't know, whatever. That's kind of how Caiaphas was, except he was in the church, so he'd, he'd be going along, he'd be like, um, you're not smiling. Church is a happy place. Put a smile on that thing, all right? Where's your Bible? You should be bringing your Bible to church. Don't you know what's good for you? Hey, you better, when it gets to worship time, you better be praising God the right way, because I'm watching or else. How many think that guy, you'd be like, oh, I just want to hang out with that guy all the time. I don't know. How many of you look at a person like that and you'd be like, oh, they love Jesus so much. No. He looked good on the outside. He knew the right words to say. He knew the right things to do when at church. But on the inside... He had nothing. He didn't know God. Even to the point where when, actually, you guys want to watch another little video clip? Even to the point where Jesus is standing right in front of him, and he says he knows God, but he doesn't recognize Jesus. But before we do that, let's do a script. Put your Bibles on your head. Bibles on your head. Bible's on your head. We're going to look up this verse as fast as you can. Once you find it, stand on up. Don't stand up before you find it. First person that we see, oh, i got the whole team out here watching. First person we see standing up, you're going to come on up here and read what their Bible says in, what verse is that? It's Matthew 26, verses 3, 4, and 5. Matthew chapter 26, verses 3, 4, and 5. Is that in the New Testament or the Old Testament? New Testament. That's the very first book of the New Testament. Mr. Rob, who was the first person you saw? Nice job. Why don't you come on down? Let's hear it for him. Now, if you haven't found it, still look it up because it's important to see what God is saying to you through your own Bible. Now, Matthew, even though it's in the first book of the New Testament, you got to get through all of the 40-something books in the Old Testament. So it's a little closer to the end than you would guess. All right. Can you read for me Matthew 26, verses 3, 4, and 5? Then the leading priests and the older Jewish leaders had a meeting at the palace of the high priest. The high priest's name was Caiaphas. At the meeting, they planned to set a trap to arrest Jesus and kill him. But they said, we must not do it during the feast. The people might cause a riot. Nice job. Give me five. Go get five tickets. Let's hear it for her. She did an awesome job. So here this guy who was supposed to be like one of the best leaders in the church is having a meeting at his house. How can we kill this guy? Does that sound like a person that has a real relationship with God? No. After they arrested Jesus like we saw in the last video clip, here's what's happened.
Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance, right up to the courtyard of the high priest. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and declared, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. <laughs> the high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Yes, it is as you say. Jesus replied. But I say to all of you. In the future, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now you have heard. The blasphemy. What do you think? He's worthy of death. All right, let's pause it right there. Now, just before we go on, in case you're wondering, those numbers in the corner, is because this, these video clips are from a movie called The Gospel According to Matthew, and every word in the whole movie is word for word out of your Bible. You can sit down with your Bible and read word for word exactly what happens in the, bio, in the video. It's pretty cool, but it makes it a long video. It's like three or four hours long. It's pretty awesome, though. So, Caiaphas here, Jesus is standing right in front of him, and he doesn't recognize Jesus. He, don't, well, he knows it's Jesus, but he doesn't recognize that he's from God. Here he's supposed to say to everyone else, oh yes, I serve God, I know the Bible, I know all this stuff. But he doesn't even recognize when God has brought something special to him. And you know what, that actually makes me think about some of us are kind of like this plastic egg too. When we come to church, we know the right things to say, we know the right way to look and the right way to act. But then when we leave church, we don't touch our Bible till the next service. Or, or maybe you're out, you're playing sports with some of your friends and they don't know Jesus and you act and you talk just like them. Even if it is about something that you know God wouldn't want you to be saying. Or maybe it's you, you're, you treat your brothers and sisters real nice when you're here at church, but as soon as you get into the car, you're like, when I get home, you're not having any of my jelly beans. Or whatever it is. You don't treat your brothers and sisters the way that God would want you to treat them. When we do that, you know what that's like? It's kind of like being a plastic egg. You look like a Christian on the outside when you're at church. But really, your relationship with Jesus is struggling. So maybe you're like that. The good news is, you can change. All right, let's go on. One more, one more egg. Let's talk about, because I saw a broken egg in here. There's one. Let me, this thing, seriously. Ah! Ah! A broken egg? I, I want to charge someone with egg murder. What? Charge someone with egg murder? No, no, we're not charging anyone with egg murder. What? Oh, where is the love around here? Oh, man. All right. All right. I get irritated when there's a broken egg, but 
straight. Let me see if I can, without exploding. Can you see that? I'm not, no, I'm not even going to try. I'd hate for it to go all over and be like, that would be bad. But in the Bible, there's a person that reminds me of a broken egg, too. You know who that is? The broken egg reminds me of Peter. You want to see my picture of Peter? That's Peter. Because Peter, he knew God. He knew Jesus. He had a real relationship with him. But sometimes he just messed up. And it made him real sad. Well, that's what some people call broken when you're like, oh, I did it again. I messed up again. Oh. How many ever felt like that? Let's watch what happens with Peter when Jesus is in trouble and some other people are saying, hey, do you know this Jesus guy? Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said. But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway where another girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. while those standing there went up to Peter and said surely you are one of them for your accent gives you away then he began to call down curses on himself and he swore to them I don't know the man immediately a rooster crowed then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Peter's life was totally shattered when he realized, I just denied Jesus. How could I do this? For two days, he was totally overcome with guilt about what he had done. But you want to know the cool thing? Jesus forgave him. And you know what? Jesus has forgiven each one of us. Maybe some of you out there, maybe you feel like, kind of like Peter. I know Jesus, but I just can't seem to get it right sometimes. I just keep messing up. Maybe some of you are out there and you're kind of like, you realize when we're talking, I'm kind of like the plastic king. I live two different lives. When I'm at church, I'm one kind of person. And when I'm at school or at home or playing with the neighborhood kids, I talk and I act a way that I would never act at church. Maybe you're kind of like that plastic. Maybe you're kind of like Judas where... You're super concerned about what's in it for me. And that's, that thought process has bled into your relationship with God where your prayer life is, God, I want, God, I want, God, I want, God, I want, without anything else really there. The great news is we can change. God's got a plan for you, and he wants you to be a new person today. But let's take a little bit of time and let's just talk to God. Talk to God about the decisions we've been making. Talk to God about the life we'd like to be, have. And let's talk to him about us wanting to know him.
word from God when I was backstage while Pastor Josh was discussing how we come to church, we put our Sunday best on, and when I say Sunday best, I mean you put your best foot forward and you come in here and we worship God and then we go home and we forget all about what we just did. So today, I want to challenge everyone in this room to try to practice. Who's good at practicing? Everybody's good at practicing. I know you are because we're practicing every day. So I want to challenge everybody in this room today that you can go home and practice being God-like. You guys understand what I mean when I say that? Being God-like. Being the way that he would want us to be like him. Like we're going to not even engage in the conversations at school when the kids are talking about one another. You should be that voice to step up and go, hey, that's not right. That's not God-like. That's not what God would want us to do is to join in on something that's not good. Everything of God is good. There's no bad in it. So when you're engaging in bad things, that's not of God. So that's not practicing God-like. So let's take a moment to pray and ask God to give us the ability and the wisdom and the strength to be God-like and start practicing it more and more because practice makes perfect. guys just asked him to just give you the strength and the ability to be more like him to be more of a leader and not a follower for you guys to just stand up for people that are not as strong as you or may not have the faith that you have and then some of that will rub off of you and onto them and that's a good thing it feels good when you can share God with someone or discuss God with someone or be able to enlighten someone about God so they can feel what you feel so they can be you know happy and loving God Miss Ina I think that is awesome let's do this actually because God is big enough to do that through each one of these kids so let's all let's do the song worship song our God because our God is greater. And our he's God awesome. Is he is awesome. He is awesome. So everybody stand up. We're going to do it as the worship team. And the worship team's out there. Worship team, I want you to just come up front and lead the kids from up here. I don't want anybody on stage because what I really want you to do is close your eyes and focus on God. Because he has chosen you. He loves you. And this time is all about him. It's not about anybody on stage. It's not about watching the moves. This is a time where we can just say, God, you are awesome. So let's do that. Everybody, close your eyes. Stand up if you aren't standing already. And let's just worship God to this time. Into the 
darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God, you are high Our God is so good. Well, we've talked about three eggs. We haven't talked about the most important person in the whole Easter story, which I'm representing with a golden egg. His name is Jesus. Because the whole reason we even have Easter is because God loved us. Before the world was even created, he knew that each one of us would be born. And he looked through the eyes of time and saw you and said, I need to put a plan of salvation in the works so that they can know me. And so that they can spend all eternity with me. Because he loved you that much. That's why Jesus came to earth 
was born in a stable. That's why he was willing. The Bible even says he considered a joy to die on the cross. Not that it was fun to die that horrible death, but because he knew that be, by him doing that, he was paying the price for all of our sins, everything we've ever done wrong. And God, because he was, because Jesus was faithful, God the Father raised him from the dead, seated him at his right hand, where even now Jesus is interceding for us. He's praying for you right now. That's pretty awesome. God has given up a lot for us. And I want to give you all the opportunity to give your life to him tonight, today. So everybody, bow your heads, close your eyes, no looking around. If you're out there and you want to make the decision today, then no matter how I've lived in the past, then no matter what you may have done or not done or even treated your family this morning, your life can be different from this point on. And you're going to make the decision that today, going forward from this point on, I will be different. I'm going to give my life to Jesus and live for Him every day of my life, doing the things that He would want me to do and not living for myself. Not just trying to look good on the outside, but finding His strength to do what's right all the time and bring glory and honor to Him because of the decisions and the sacrifices that He has made for us. If that's you, if you want to make that decision, raise your hand up real high. All right. Once you raise your hand, you can put it back down. It's the most important decision you'll ever make. Let's all pray this prayer with those that raise your hand. And if you raise your hand, I want you to really think about and believe the words you're about to say. Everyone say this. Dear Jesus... I thank you that you loved me so much that you were willing to die a horrible death and pay the price for everything I've done wrong. And God the Father, I thank you that you love me, that you've chosen me to be part of your family and to live with you forever. So right now, I make the choice to live for you every day of my life. Come into me. Make me brand new on the inside so that I can have your ability to do what's right and to be like you and help others know you. Thank you, God, for what you've done for me. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, if you pray that prayer for the very first time, right after we dismiss, someone's going to be sitting right over here, right on the corner of the stage. I want you to stop by right over there because we have a free gift that's going to help you understand the decision you just made. So stop right up there. And if you want prayer about anything, it doesn't matter how big or how small, just stop right on right there. The person that will be sitting there will be more than happy to pray with you. Or if you feel more comfortable, come into anyone else. You, any one of the team in here can pray with you. We'd love to do that. All right, let's give a huge round of applause for those that made that decision for the first time. That is awesome. That is what Easter is all about. Well, now, I'm thinking... We do something kind of fun. What if we do the memory verse game? If you knew the memory verse, come on up here on stage. It is memory verse game time. Oh, yeah. All right. How many knew the memory verse? How many knew? How many knew? All right. Here we go. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs>
Lauren Round. Uh, let's hear it for Miss Lauren. And now for the boys. <sighs> Got one. Brady. All right. Let's hear it for him. Awesome job, all of you. Way to go, way to go. Excellent. I'm very proud of you. Have a seat. All right. As we know with the game, who goes first? Girls go first. Ladies always go first. Why do we do that? Why do ladies go first? Because we want to treat them with respect. That's right. All right. So, Miss Lauren. Do number one. Door number two. Or door number three. Number three. All right. Let's go on over with Miss Logan. Number three. And give a little tappy tap. Hello. We have. Lego Friends with 25 prize balls. Do you want to keep it or trade it in? Trade it in. I didn't see that one coming. All right. So, do we want door number one or door number two? Number one. All right. Let's go on over and see what you got here. Hey, that's my water. Ooh, it is a trip to the movies with Pastor Josh and Kate to see the Croods and 25 prize bucks. Pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, let's hear it for her. Let's hear it for her. That was a trip hazard. It had the microphone had it coming. All right, so Brady, door number one, door number two, or door number three. Door number two. All right. Let's go ahead and give it a little knock. Hello. Housekeeping. Whoa. All right. Oh, oh. He got a Wreck It Ralph, and then a movie Bible study. And you can earn 25 prize bucks if you do the movie Bible study off of that with Wreck It Ralph. So, do you want to keep it or you want to trade it in? Trade it. trade it in. All right. So, let's knock it. So, we're giving back Wreck It Ralph. All right. So, do you want door number three or number one? Number three. Number three. All right. So, we're going to go to door number three. Let's see what we got here. So, go ahead and knock. And this you have, ooh, you also won a trip to see the cruise with Pastor Josh and Kate and 25 prize bucks. Pretty cool, very cool. Let's hear it for him. Awesome, awesome. All right. Next, it's time for ticket drawing. So now we need to call for Mr. Rob in the CIA. So on the count of three, let's call for him. One, two. Three. Mr. Robin CIA! There we go. Alright, it is. Tickets. You came down to get out your tickets. We will call some numbers. Let's give everybody a chance here. Sure, you already picked one? The first ticket is 232. Four eight zero. Four, last three numbers, four eight zero. Four eight zero, the last three numbers. What color ticket is that? Green. A green ticket. Do you got it? No. Four eight. Oh. It's a match. Alright, let's hear it for it. Now if you guys your ticket is called, we will give you a wristband. The wristband, you come with your parents and you go to Prize City and turn it in. The second ticket is 232-579. Last three numbers, 579. Oh. 
579. <laughs> it's a match. The ticket is two three two four seven five. Last four seven five. Going twice. Two, three, two, four, one, three. Last lane in my number is four, one, three. It's a match. <laughs> Give it to her. Give it to her. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I wanted that so bad. It's pink lemonade flavor too. Announcements. Kids Camp is coming up. Kids Camp! Kids camp in two weeks, half of your deposit is due, or half of the amount. Well, it's we're out of control today. All right, in two weeks, half the money for kids camp is due. So, yes. So make sure you tell your parents and make sure you get your money in. And it is time for cleanup and dismissal. This is time where you pick your shoes up, you pick your frisbees up. <laughs> 